This is the second in a series of videos in which I am repairing this machine. It is an IBM 5120, otherwise known as a 5110 version 3. It was released about 1980. It's a very advanced machine for the time. Integrated floppy disk drives, uh, an advanced processor, inbuilt memory, quite a few other features that we'll look at uh, as I repair. This is not a full restoration, this is just to get it up and running, but I will be cleaning it up, cleaning and refurbishing the floppy drives, that sort of thing. Um, very heavy machine, so I will be working on it in, uh, in sections. It weighs about 45 kilograms, or about 100 pounds, uh, and I know that's true, I've just carried it up a couple of flights of stairs. And um, this shouldn't take too long, I'm hoping this will be a, a relatively short series but it depends on what we find inside. I don't know when this was last powered up, the power cord's been cut off. So the first thing I'll do is spin it around, we'll get the top cover off, uh, see if it's complete, see what the uh, condition of the internals are, and then hopefully get some ideas as to uh, what the task is ahead. Okay, we'll begin by getting the top rear cover off. It should pop off fairly easily. I haven't looked inside this yet, so I don't know uh, what to expect. Okay, there's an awful lot of dirt and uh, grime inside this, far more than I was expecting. It is one of the issues with forced air cooling, you do get a, a lot of dust and muck uh, building up. Also looks like it was stored somewhere quite damp, there's a lot of rust in here, so I'll just move the camera a bit closer. Okay, so this gives you a good idea as to why you shouldn't just turn these things on. Um, I think if we'd switched this on we'd have a, a lot of problems. Uh, so I'll go through this, have a quick look at it. I'll take all the main modules out, so I'll just remove the lower panel pop off. Uh, even more dirt in here and if we look inside the card tray I'll just lower the camera so you can see inside there. Okay it's absolutely filthy it's probably the one of the worst ones I've ever seen. I've got no idea where this was used or stored um, but what normally happens is it builds up dirt and then you get moisture in there and the dirt traps the moisture and it starts to corrode. Um, this is probably repairable, but it depends on how severe the corrosion is on the motherboard and whether that's made its way up into the main cards. But what I'll start doing is uh, taking the upper modules out, the big uh, modules such as the floppy drives, uh, CRT, that sort of thing, and then we'll be able to uh, pull the uh, card tray out and have a look at the cards. You can get the cards out uh, quite easily, this tray just slide out, but um, I've got a feeling it's probably corroded in place and I don't want to break anything by uh, just trying to slide it out. So I'll strip this down from the top down and uh, we'll try and find out uh, just how much uh, uh, damage and corrosion there is in this. Okay, I'll start on the left hand side. I'll get all this shielding off and that will give us more access to the internal parts. Just held in place with a series of screws. And it's just a case of making sure that I can find them all and remove them and the shielding should just pop off. Okay, so I have the shielding taken off the back. Uh, what I can now do is slacken off the uh, clamping screws that hold the floppy drive assembly in place and in theory it should slide back and out. It rarely does that, so I tend not to prefer doing that. You can end up damaging something. But in theory what you're supposed to be able to do is just unplug the two power connectors disconnect the signal leads and then this whole assembly should come out along with the shielding. But as I say I don't recommend doing it that way unless it's been dismantled fairly recently. But there's so much corrosion on this that I really don't want to risk pulling this out without taking the screws out that hold the clamping bracket in place. So what I'm going to do is move to the other side of the machine. I'll take the monitor out and then I'll try and take the entire tray out that secures the floppy drives in place. And before I do that, what I'll do is take this uh, interface card out of the way so I don't damage it. Well, this machine is in a very poor condition, very badly corroded, absolutely caked with dirt and grime. 
This doesn't actually belong to me, and I'm not sure the owner's going to want to invest the amount of money required to get this working again, but I'll keep working through it anyway, so at least we get a full understanding of uh, what it is we're up against. Uh, but it is by far the worst machine I've seen. Uh, I don't know where it's been stored, but it looks like it was uh, up to several inches in water at one point. I've taken all the chassis screws out, all the ones um, that I should need to take out. The way this is supposed to work is each module is held in place from the back of the machine with a, a few screws and you should be able to take the screws out and then slide the entire module out. Unfortunately then they're not sliding out, all the cables and everything is uh, kind of bonded together um, th with corrosion and dirt and I don't want to just pull them out because it will do even more damage so uh, off camera I'm just going to uh, ease them out very carefully. I want to do it off camera because the camera's in the way and it's very difficult to work around it and I want to be quite careful and get them out with the minimal amount of damage. I get the monitor out of the way fairly easily, that's just a, an easy module to uh, remove. I've taken the screws out, that one I just lift out as a complete module. It's a pity the rest of the modules won't come out that easily but as I say they are uh, absolutely um, corroded into place. So I'll get that done off camera and as soon as I've made a bit of progress and got some of the modules out we'll have a look and see what's left. Okay I was just removing the uh, card box and uh, found something that I've never seen before. I work on these machines or this type of machine a, a great deal so I've seen machines in lots of different conditions but as I say this is the worst one I've ever seen. When I took this off I've seen something uh, new there's normally a rubber pad bonded to the underside of this plate and it's to stop the cards vibrating loose and to stop them wagging about uh, when the unit's moved around. Um, but there's actually something growing out of the rubber on this particular pad. So it's, if you've seen uh, Techmoan's videos then you'll know that rubber belts and the like turn to a, full, a sort of goo. And that's what this has done, it's just like a, a tarry gooey substance. But there's actually something like a some sort of uh, fungus or something growing out of it. It's just amazing that something can actually grow in this material. So uh, that's a new one. Uh, as I said, I'm not really now holding out much hope for this unit. It is looking like it might be uh, past uh, any sort of sensible economic repair. Um, the only thing I can really do is take it apart, see what uh, uh, is salvageable, contact the owner and see what he wants to do. Uh, but this is um, in extremely poor condition. I think what I'll do is take the card box out, take all the cards out, see how, uh, uh, what condition they're in, whether they can be cleaned or not. And um, we'll go from there, but as I say, it's not looking promising. The amount of corrosion in this is, um, is probably a bit beyond what makes uh, uh, anything sent, any sort of uh, repair sensible. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll contact the owner, uh, see what he wants to do, um, give all these cards a bit of a clean, see what we're up against, but I suspect this unit might be beyond any sort of uh, sensible economic repair. Uh, I think the amount of corrosion and uh, damage in here is maybe uh, far greater than uh, the outside would tend to suggest. But I'll carry on, I'll take the cards out, we'll have a look at a few and see what condition they're in. But. Uh, yeah, another new one, so uh, you always find something new when you're working on these things. Okay, I finished the initial disassembly and uh, things haven't really improved. So we'll look at each of the major uh, components in turn and see just how bad they are. So the uh, centre portion of the chassis is not looking too bad, that will clean up fairly well. So I've unscrewed that, let's get that out of the way and even the lower chassis is not too bad. This, it looks really disgusting, but it will clean up quite nicely. There's nothing really uh, in here that we can't manage quite, uh, quite easily. There are no major breaks. Um, the condition this is in is quite good. The thing that concerns me a bit is there is liquid damage in here. I can see there's liquid been running through this. So I've got a feeling this has been stored in a loft or a shed that was leaking, and there's been a lot of liquid going through it. We'll see more evidence of that later on. Um, but certainly this part of the chassis is recoverable. It would take a lot of work, um, but certainly can be done. Haven't looked at the keyboard yet. I'm suspecting there'll be a lot of corrosion on that if water's been running onto it. Uh, but I'll get this part of the chassis out of the way and we'll look at the next bit. 
Okay, so looking at the power supply, uh, cosmetically it doesn't look too disgusting. The main problem is there does appear to be more water damage on the back of the board and that could cause a lot of issues trying to get this uh, up and running. Uh, the capacitors don't seem to be bulging but I suspect if we powered this up then they would fail quite quickly. The main concerns are these huge ones here. If they do fail then obviously uh, that can cause a lot of damage. Uh, all that's in here is just a filter block so there's nothing really in here that couldn't be easily replaced or even just bypassed. Uh, so that's not too bad, that could be cleaned up. I'm sure the power supply could be uh, got to work quite easily um, but might cost a bit to replace these uh, capacitors and uh, they do need to be certain types because they're screwed to the board. Smaller types could be put inside with some flying leads of course. Um, it kind of depends again what the owner wants to do. I can take them out and test them. Uh, the only problem is with capacitors of this age is they might test OK and then uh, fairly quickly they could fail and uh, cause a lot of damage to the rest of the unit. Um, but I mean it looks disgusting but this would clean up reasonably well. Uh, the main problem is when I turn it round you can see it looks like there's been a lot of mo moisture getting into this thing and um, my concern here would be looking through I can see there's a lot of corrosion on the back of the board you can't see it on the camera but uh, when I can shine a torch in here and there's a lot of uh, white fur on the back of the board so uh, that board uh, would take a lot of work to get uh, up and running okay I'll get this out of the way and we'll look at the worst bit okay so looking at the car tray we can see this is in a very poor state as I said, I've never seen one quite this bad it is really disgusting I'm not even sure really what's happened to it um, one thing that's interesting with machines of this era though is they were very much uh, still development machines they were still being developed and a very good uh, example of that and a good way to see that is we should turn them and look at the bottom of the motherboard you'll see it's a wire wrap assembly and they did that mainly because this was under constant development so it wasn't really a case of they designed it, made PCBs and that was it. This was uh, constantly evolving and so quite often you'll find that you might have two machines that look identical on the outside but could be very different internally. Now what I'm going to do is just pop one of the cards out. You can see the um, motherboard itself is uh, in very poor state. I've got a feeling the contacts might be quite badly corroded in there but I'll pop one of the cards out and we'll see how bad it looks. Okay, so it doesn't look quite as bad as I was expecting. A lot of dust and dirt. Have a look at the contacts. They don't look too good, but they may clean up. It's really a, a matter of taking the thing completely apart and spending some time trying to clean it. They may clean up, uh, but the problem is um, if there are problems on some of these components then there's obviously absolutely no chance that we could find replacements for them. Okay, I'll just pop this back in so I don't uh, misplace it. Okay, and there is another um, top motherboard for hosting various cards and um, this one doesn't look too bad, it was uh, much higher up in the machine. There is corrosion in the connectors uh, you can see there's a lot of grime and um, kind of tarry substance all over it. Uh, it would take a lot of cleaning. Some of the contacts do look to be very badly corroded. Um, but the actual motherboard itself doesn't look too bad. And this is actually a PCB, so you can see this was much more evolved, much more stabilised. Uh, but the general build for everything is, is very similar. It's this type of uh, block matrix. Um, board design and these were designed a little bit like FPGAs are today um, different uh, technology of course but they had kind of a block layout and then they just interconnected them and uh, connected um, the ICs in such a way that it gave them good flexibility and very fast um, development using relatively standardized boards so it's quite a clever idea but uh, obviously it means that uh, you end up with fairly uh, inefficient board layers. Okay, so we'll get the last bit onto the bench and have a look at that. 
So this is of course the floppy drive assembly. Uh, incidentally you're supposed to be able to just slide these out and as I said at the start of the video it was um, a matter of trying to get this out without damaging anything but it was fairly badly corroded in place. What you would normally do is just uh, remove the screw at the back left and then this whole thing should just slide backwards and lift out but uh, it just wouldn't move. Uh, even with the screws um, taken out I still had uh, quite a struggle getting these out. Uh, but now they're out we can see that um, again this uh, is absolutely full of dirt. I've got no idea what's happened to this. I've never seen one like this. It's absolutely full. Looking into the slots there, probably a quarter full of um, just some horrible dirt and grime. You Perfectly cleanable of course. It's uh, more than likely these could be taken apart, cleaned up and got working. Uh, as I always say anything's repairable but this isn't mine. Uh, I'm not sure I want to invest the amount of time uh, an expense in getting this working. Um, as I say, I need to talk to the owner and see what he wants to do. Um, certainly it would be a, a very interesting project to take on, but um, just, as I say, very time consuming um, because of the amount of uh, corrosion and uh, work that would be required getting this back up to a, a sensible condition before you could even contemplate switching it on. If you tried to turn this on now with it all connected up I suspect it would probably just uh, blow the fuse or catch fire or uh, something bad would happen so it's not something um, you would do. There's a lot of work um, just to get to the point where you would dare switch this on. Um, so that's it for this video. Um, at the beginning I said uh, I was hoping this would be a fairly quick series but um, as ever things can surprise you and certainly the condition inside this compared to the outside has been a bit of a a surprise, uh, much worse than I expected and a bit disappointing really that uh, it hasn't been better looked after but uh, this is uh, kind of in the nature of this old equipment but um, it's rare to see one this bad.